Greetings, everyone. I wanted to take a moment to show you the latest addition to the Lost Parallax film project. Uh, this is what's called a motion control system, which is utilized in a lot of stop motion films uh, and some live action films as well. Uh, this is all custom made uh, by myself and my engineer. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of take a moment to show you the different components and uh, how they all work together and uh, the kind of results that you can see from them. So taking a step back, you see there are three separate pieces to this system. You've got your software on the left side, uh, and I'm running this off a MacBook. Uh, in the middle, you have the control box for all the motors. And then on the right side, you have the actual head itself. So uh, the software, of course, controls the box, and the box controls the motors. So we'll take a look at each one of these systems separately. And in fact, we'll probably, yeah, we'll work backwards. So this head is a uh, three-axis head, and you're probably familiar with the typical heads that you might have at home on a tripod, which is a pan and tilt. So this one has your uh, pan right there, has your tilt, but also has a third one, which is roll. So this is a three-axis, uh, sometimes called the Dutch head. And so this is what actually uh, uh, orients the camera to however the uh, shot uh, you know, requires. So this uh, head was all made specifically for the Canon T2i, so this is our new camera that's going to be utilized in the film. Uh, so it's all balanced specifically for that camera. So you can see there are the three separate motors that control the three different axes. So this is your roll axis, so as this turns you actually see the camera turn. You move back a spot and you see the tilt motor right there, so that actually tilts it up and down. And then you drop right on down and hidden underneath there is the pan motor so he's hiding under there so that's what's actually moving the entire arm around back and forth like that so take a step further back and you've got a cable box that moves all your signals down into your motor control box and interface box right here so uh, this takes a little bit of explaining as to what's going on here so uh, you've got your power supplies going on inside here uh, all these little red boards hidden back there in the back those are your motor control boards and you've got your main wiring board kind of hidden down inside there. And then your interface board. I don't know if you can see that fella or not. He's like hiding way back there, a little green light. So that's kind of the uh, ambassador, if you will, between all your motor control pieces and the computer as well. So uh, this board or this uh, control box is built um, with a few extra little spots available. So this is your pan, tilt, and roll, which I'm using now. But I also have four separate uh, spots where I can hook up four other motor control systems or additional uh, motion control systems and so that would be utilized uh, to move the entire uh, uh, camera head around inside the set so instead of just your pan tilt and roll you would actually have a boom up a boom down in and out and actually moving the entire camera around inside the set so if you can visualize what's going on with that that's what those extra spots are for so uh, so moving back from the control box, you get all the way over into your software. Uh, this is the same software that I'll be using uh, for the animation itself. It's called Dragon Frame. It's a very popular program. Uh, and it has uh, motion control features built into it. So this is actually the motion control screen. And so you can see down here, I've got the pan, tilt, and roll. And each one of these colors coordinate to different colors on the timeline. So your timeline starts at frame zero on the left. And as you count up in frames and you know move forward in time to the right, you can see how all these different motors or uh, uh, camera axes have different positions. And so this shows you where the the pan tilt or roll will exist at different times throughout the the animation shot. So I'm going to go ahead and start this moving. And so you can see as it's progressing forward. It's showing me what frame I am currently on, and the motors are moving as we progress forward. So you can hop over here and you can see that the head is moving. Now it's not moving really, really fast, but it actually is still moving pretty fast for stop motion. So keeping in mind that stop motion is, you know, one frame at a time, uh, this will actually, you know, advance ever so slightly, just little bits at a time as the animation is being performed. So a lot of times it's like less than a degree or just or a single degree that it changes between frames. So 
Um, I just kind of put this sequence together so you can see some of the different moves that it's capable of. So you can kind of see how it's just kind of advancing, you know, frame by frame and just kind of spinning around and doing its pan tilts and rolls. So um, I've had some questions as far as like how this actually works and I've tried to explain it, but I figured this would help out uh, quite a bit and uh, kind of give you an idea as to how it's functioning and how all the different components are working together. So I will be able to uh, go through the entire shot if it has a lot of camera moves in there and see if the framing is appropriate or if I'm cutting anything off that needs to be in the shot um, without like going through the entire animation process and realizing, whoops, I made a mistake back in frame 10 and I have to redo the entire thing again. So um, some people have also asked, uh, what's the point of using this elaborate system? Why don't just put the camera onto a tripod and just use it like that? There are a couple uh, benefits to using this. Uh, one is the repeatability of a shot. And so you can see like as the timeline exists, I can repeat this exact same sequence capturing frames and I can animate all the characters in the frame or uh, in the shot, then go back and record the exact same scene without the characters. And that gives me a nice timeline, a nice, uh, uh, ability to erase rigging and a lot of different things like that which help in the uh, in the editing process so it really does uh, increase the flexibility that the um, that the animator has while producing these projects so um, hopefully this will uh, be the first of many different systems all controlled by uh, by the software so um, this is going to be the first uh, kind of demonstration of the different pieces that I've uh, I've put together uh, to kind of make this project work out. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, produce a lot more and show you more about the animation process. So you're more than welcome to uh, visit our website at lostparallax.com and uh, check out the links to our Kickstarter page. And if you want to become a backer to this project and uh, help fund this so that we can make this magic happen, I definitely uh, encourage that. And any donation between $5 and $5 billion is uh, greatly appreciated. So hopefully I look forward to presenting a lot more components and a lot more filmmaking magic for your enjoyment. So I look forward to doing so.